Hey guys, and uh, welcome to another online Bible study. Uh, Richie coming at you uh, from the book of John. Uh, we are uh, in the book of John still. Uh, if you've been uh, faithfully going through these videos, you know we're uh, on chapter 12. Uh, if this is your first video, go back to the very beginning. Uh, go to boardandcc.org. Uh, or you can go to my YouTube page, uh, anyway you can find them there, it's, uh, they're pretty much everywhere. So um, start at 1-1 and uh, go through there because uh, the book of John kind of goes in order. So uh, we kind of turned the corner in the book of John. Um, you know, the first 11 chapters are really of John or of Jesus' ministry here on earth that John is uh, chronicling. And now uh, once it gets to chapter 12, then we're getting into the last week of Jesus' life. Uh, so the last... Uh, um, uh, John 12, 1 through 11, we looked at in the last um, video, uh, that was Mary anointing Jesus uh, before going into Jerusalem. So now here it is, it's time for the Passover, uh, all of the Jews are going to be heading to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover there, and that's what's going on. So so this was the uh, Mary anointed Jesus at Bethany the day before Passover begins, uh, so that's where we pick up the story. We are in John chapter 12, verse 12, and we're going to go down through 26. Uh, so if you've got your Bible, go ahead and grab that. It says, So the next day the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, and behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples didn't understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. Then the crowd who had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was so that they had heard that he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look at the world has gone after him. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever, do, whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will be my servant also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. So so that's uh, 12 down through 26. Uh, so let's uh, start to break that down. Obviously, the, uh, the first part of this, 12 down through 19, though, that's a pretty familiar passage. You know, if you've been in the church, uh, you know, at any point throughout your life uh, growing up, you know that story. You know, this is the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem uh, the week before he loses his life. You know, we celebrate Palm Sunday uh, in our churches where, you know, we just, you know, this is the story. This is the Palm Sunday story. This obviously would have been on Sunday. So this is beginning the week going into the Passion Week or the last week of Jesus' life. So this is on Sunday that Jesus is coming in. Uh, and then on that Friday, Jesus is going to die. And then obviously the next Sunday, a week from this date, uh, Jesus is going to defeat death and come out of the tomb on the third day. So it says, as the large crowd had come to the feast to hear, um, and they heard that Jesus was coming. So, so word, you know, 12, 1 through 11 tells us that Jesus was in Bethany, which was just under two miles outside of Jerusalem. So he wasn't staying far away from Jerusalem. Obviously, you know, Passover, it's a big time. All of the Jews come into um I come in Jerusalem for Passover. They have a big feast. They have a big festival, big celebration. Uh, and so everyone knew that Jesus was probably going to be coming in. You know, but the Pharisees have been trying to kill him for so long. You know, I guess it was kind of up in the air if Jesus would come or not. But then, so then word comes that Jesus is coming. Jesus is on his way. Jesus is coming into town for Passover. He's coming to Jerusalem. Uh, so the crowd decides to... Uh, meet him in a uh, a fantastic way. They go and cut branches of palm trees, and they went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the king of Israel. So um, this here, the word Hosanna uh, is, a, is a Hebrew term meaning please save us. This is uh, from the good, good old commentary here. Uh, it says, please save us. Uh, so for John, 
to say that the people said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord is theologically important because it means that some of the Jews understood what was going on. Jesus had not come on his own name, but with God's obvious blessing and in the name of God. This was because he was to reveal God to his people. At least part of the wild popularity at this point must be attributed to his avoidance of self-glorification. Um, Jesus was not a self-promoter. He was an agent of, you know, not he was not an agent of public relations. Um, you know, he was not, you know, trying to leverage his popularity into a lucrative contract. Yet, despite um, that, he was humble and he had humility. Uh, and the crowd, you know, understood this that he was coming in the name of God. He wasn't coming in the name of Jesus. He was coming in the name of God. Uh, his father, and he was always there to give glory to the father. You know, over and over and over, we see in, in the book of John, Jesus saying, I can do nothing on my own accord, but through the father, I can do all of these things. Uh, then they also say that he is the king of Israel, that Jesus is the king of Israel. So this, this goes to show you that the crowd really understood uh, three things about Jesus. One, he was humble. Two, he came on God, in God's name. Of Everything came through God's power through his father's power and that three that jesus was the was the king um of the jews um they may have thought he was coming in as someone who was going to take over and actually physically become a king and sit on a throne in jerusalem and overthrow rome um at least in their province um you know because they you know they've just heard the story of jesus who had um you know spoke to lazarus to come out of the tomb you know that would be a pretty great king to have so and it says, And then Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming in the donkey's colt. Now that's from Zechariah 9 9. Zechariah 9 9 um, is where that is. So here's just yet another um, piece of prophecy that was, you know, written, you know, nearly 500 years before Jesus was born, and this is coming true. So it says here, He's coming on a donkey's colt. So it said that his disciples did not understand these things, uh, but when Jesus was glorified, they remembered what had been written. Uh, you know, so in the moment, in the moment, the disciples don't really understand, you know, that, that Jesus is going to sit on this, this young donkey and ride in the town. He really does, you know, they don't put two and two together. But then after Jesus was crucified and after Jesus rose from the dead, then they start remembering all of the uh, messianic prophecies and they're like, oh, you know, light bulb. You know, they knew that Jesus was the Christ. They knew Jesus was from God. They knew he could do amazing things. Uh, you know, and I'm sure they knew that he was the Messiah. But after the death and resurrection, then it was just everything started falling into place for them. And they were just like, whoa, okay, now we, we you know, we finally get it now. So, um, and then in verse 17, it says, The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. So you could just see this spectacle, you know, of Jesus coming from Bethany, you know, just a two-mile journey, and people breaking off palm branches and singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, here's the one who comes from God. Uh, you know, he, you know, here comes the king of the Jews. Uh, and then there's, you know, this group saying, hey, we were there when he brought Lazarus out of the tomb. He raised a man who had been dead for four days. Um, this is, my apologies. Um, you know, this is just a great, um, great spectacle. You know, it was just, just this crazy, craziest thing, this huge huge party of Jesus coming in. You know, it shows how popular he was. It shows how he, um, you know, everybody knew who Jesus was and everybody loved Jesus. You know, everyone except for the Pharisees, you know, down 19, it says, Pharisees said to one another, you see that you are gaining nothing. It says, look, the world has gone after him. Um, the, the word world that they use there is used to mean uh, non-Jewish or non-religious. Basically, you know, the way we would use the world, uh, like like in the context of, you know, be not of the world or, you know, don't look like the world. Uh, you know, we should be in the world, but not of the world. That word, the world, is basically ungodly people. So the Pharisees are saying, look, these ungodly people have gone after him. So basically, they're like, look, you know, he's a false prophet and everyone who's following him, they're crazy, they're lost, they're terrible, terrible people. So... You know, a lot going on there. Um, number 20 down through 26, you know, these six verses, this is one of those um, passages that's unique to John. This is, you know, this little bit of snippet of story is not found anywhere else in the uh, uh, Matthew, Mark, or Luke, uh, but it is basically these Greeks are coming to see Jesus, um, which is kind of crazy if you think about it for right now. Um, in Jerusalem and where, where Jesus was in Judea, 
You know, basically he ministered to Jews. He talked to Jews. You know, the Jews were the chosen people of God. Uh, he was from the line of David, from the tribe of Judah. And he ministered to those people. But here we see in 2026 that his ministry expanded even to the Greeks. You know, he may not have went to the Greeks, but the stories of Jesus um, and his healing and him being the son of God had spread all the way out to, um, you know, outside of the realm of the Judea province, you know, and they, you know, and they say, you know, they come to Phil and they say, sir, we wish to see Jesus. You know, we've heard the stories. We want to see him. You know, we've heard about this man who can do all these great things. We want to meet this guy. We want to, you know, see what's going on, you know, so they go to Philip, uh, and Philip goes to Andrew and then they both go to Jesus. Um, interesting little tidbit, uh, Philip and Andrew are the only two Greek names in, uh, of all of the 12 disciples. The rest of them were Hebrew names, uh, but just those two were Greek names. So, uh, you know, that could be the Greeks sought them out because, uh, you know, they, they looked Greek. Uh, obviously, he was, um, Phil was from Bethsaida and Galilee, so he was not Greek, uh, but, you know, there may have been some ancestry there. Um, you know, and then Jesus, so then they come, they tell Jesus, and then this is what Jesus says. Uh, in verse 23 down through 26, he says, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. You know, just like what we talked about just a minute ago. This is his death and burial and resurrection. This is the glorification of Jesus. And it says, Truly, truly, I say to you. Um, now, remember the words truly, truly. Anytime you see the words truly, truly, um, basically what, what he is saying or what Jesus is saying or whoever is writing it, if to say truly, truly, that is basically saying, if I'm lying, you can kill me. You have my permission to kill me if what I say is not true. So truly, truly. I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Uh, you know, this is this is just Jesus speaking in you know a figurative and allegorical way again of you know him being the seed that has to go down and that has to die that has to be buried in order to um, save the world. You know, a, a, a seed has to die and go into the ground for it to sprout up new things. Um, so then he says, whoever loses whoever loves his life will lose it and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life uh, this is a tough passage this is something that in the American church in the American you know American Christianity we don't really like to talk about don't like to think about don't like to preach about don't like to live out you know that you know if you love your life if you love yourself then you are going to live for yourself and you're not going to live for Jesus and you're going to lose your life you know you are going to miss the boat uh, because you're living for yourself. You are on your throne instead of having Jesus on your throne. But then he says, um, but whoever hates his life in this world uh, will live eternally. You know, whoever hates himself in this world will live eternally. He says, if anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. You know, so this is just Jesus saying, follow me, follow me, follow me. You know, this is just like, you know, in Luke 9, where he says, you know, you must take up your cross, die daily, and follow me. Uh, this is exactly the same thing is, you know, we have to live as sold out followers of Jesus Christ, not just uh, you know, pew sitting Christians. It's, you know, there's a huge difference, you know, from someone who just comes in and and you know, comes to church on Sunday and that's it, you know, as opposed to someone who is following Christ and obeying Christ and living in, within the statutes that are in the Bible uh, and serving others and loving others and spreading the gospel and doing everything they can to further the kingdom of God. Um, that's what Jesus is talking about in these last three, four verses of, you know, you have to be a sold out follower of his. So, so that's it. So the triumphal entry, uh, you know, in the story, you know, we have hit Passion Week. We're a week away uh, from the resurrection. Uh, it is, you know, Jesus is now in Jerusalem and a lot's going to happen uh, over the next, um, you know, goodness gracious, um, I'm terrible at math, I'm sorry, eight or nine chapters um, of what happens in that last week, you know, of getting to the upper room discourse, you know, the Last Supper to the Garden of Gethsemane, to all of the, the trials, to the cross, to um, the empty tomb. So there's a lot going on there, and uh, we're going to hit all of it, of course. Um, so, But until next time, um, God bless you guys. Uh, next time we'll do 27 all the way down through 43. So um, look forward to that, and um, as always, God bless you guys, and we'll see you all soon.